Among the woodlands, wetlands, and wildlife of hills of southwest Portland lies a unique educational experience that is our Oregon Episcopal School. The school occupies a 59-acre campus where 830 students in pre-K through 12, 12th grades share an excellent faculty, a college preparatory curriculum, and a strong sense of community. Offering a true liberal arts curriculum, OES is dedicated to scholarship and an enriched academic environment of learning by doing that strives to help each individual reach his or her fullest potential. Small classes provide intimate learning environments that allow teachers to instill in each student a love for learning and the joy of discovery. The oldest Episcopal school west of the Rockies, OES values developing the spirit as well as the mind. Though steeped in Episcopal heritage and tradition, the school welcomes students of all beliefs, including teaching about all major faiths and encourages individuals to discover their own spiritual path. This past October, MIT Lemelson sponsored a few OES students, including myself, to build a human-powered irrigation system for low-income families in Africa and Asia. Since August, we've been reading everything we can about irrigation and water movement systems. Recently, however, we have begun actually designing our own system. The most in interesting thing about our project is that although there is a lot of engineering to be done, it is primarily research-based. When we first started working on our system, we assumed that rivers were abundant and water tables were just a few meters underground, that if we made a pump that could, and that we could implement it anywhere. Unfortunately, we were wrong. We had to hit the books and the internet once again to narrow down our users. We had wanted our system to be able to be used anywhere people needed it, but we realized that trying to help so many people at once would end up not helping anyone at all. So we spent many hours researching specific places uh, that people could use our irrigation systems. After a couple of weeks, we decided to focus on the African country of Niger. Since then, we've been finding out everything we can about Niger's culture, lifestyle, agriculture, animal rainfall, and other things of that sort. After meeting with some guys from the Peace Corps a few weeks ago, we decided that we had done enough research to start designing our irrigation system. In Niger, many of the smaller tribes and towns use wells for their water, so we decided that wells would be our primary water source. Unfortunately, some of these wells are up to 50 meters deep, and no pump can create enough suction to pull things up that far. So, the water must be lifted by some mechanism. Some of the ideas we had for pulling up the water were a sponge rope that got ringed out at the top of the well, a tube that filled with water and went around in a circle like a ferris wheel, and buckets connected to a rope that winds up at the top. This winter, we finally de developed a prototype of one of our ideas and are in the process of testing our design. However, our overall goal is to make a system that can actually be implemented in Niger with the help of groups like the Peace Corps. Mary Abrams, who is the Peace Corps Country Director of Niger, visited us in Portland, Oregon. She has been very instrumental to helping us learn about everyday lifestyles of the people in various Niger regions and territories. We have had several meetings with Peace Corps uh, volunteers generous people who have share, shared with us their knowledge of water issues and Niger culture. We felt it was necessary to have our human-powered water pump go through a design review process. From our reading, we discovered that there are several design review processes and procedures. We learned that a team of engineers are needed for a design review, so we sought out the best design engineers in the world. Lucky for us, the Nike World Headquarters is located about a mile away from our school. We forged a relationship with the creative design team at Nike, Bruce Kilgore and Patty Smaldone. What better folks to help us with our design? Bruce Kilgore is the craftsman responsible for designing the most iconic basketball shoe in the history of the game. He did it all by following one simple obsession, making the athletic experience better through functional design. At Nike, that means designing with a purpose and understanding the sport and the culture that surrounds it. From this working theory, Kilgore developed the Air Force One and thus drew the blueprint a legacy was built from and wrote the constitution and nation of style has been based upon. Bruce and Patty continue to create and invent new designs and patents at Nike. Nike is a company that dedicates its research and technology to better designs. They are the world experts on body movement and human exercise. Early in our design process, uh, Bruce Kilgore and Patty Smaldone came to our school for a meeting where we held a primary design review. The purpose of our pre preliminary design review meeting was to review our conceptual design and to gain an understanding on the creative process. One of our goals was to ensure that our planned technical approach would meet the requirements for our Niger customers. 
From this meeting, we gained a lot of design knowledge and helped us work to formulate our critical criteria and product specifications. This meeting en enabled us to shape our design direction, make it easy for the people that will be using the water pump. Making things easy made things harder. We learned that our de design would need to reflect the current knowledge of our end users, which is primarily Niger women. There were many requirements that were not cons consistent with our initial product uh, specification. The purpose of a CDR is to review the detailed design to ensure that the design implementation has met the requirements and to see if our invention, invention actually works. Finally came the day for our test readiness review. We met to discuss and review whether or not we had everything covered. The purpose of the TRR is to review preparations and readiness for testing our design. Since time was running short, we hurriedly adopted the adage of just do it and quickly moved on to the product test phase. <laughs> our next phase is the production readiness review. The purpose of the PRR is to ensure this design is completely and accurately documented and ready for formal release to manufacturing. Now that school is out for the summer, we will start working on this critical phase of our design. So back to the computer again, back to our invent team's room. We are readying for a trip to Niger in 2009. Thank you.